Okay, so I have here a couple of integral chef knives that I'm working on, Mosaic Damascus. And right now, um, one thing that I haven't shown on my channel before is how I do the um, through tang handles with the bolt end. And so I'm going to show how I braise threads into these and then um, how I make the nut and ultimately fit them up. So here they are in a vise, in my uh, 6 inch Wilton bullet vise. And I'm just going to anneal the ends of the tangs real quick so that I can then get a nice bandsaw cut on them to make a slot for the bolts. So I'm gently heating the ends of these to a very dull red heat color, about an inch down. Basically to super temper them and get them as soft as I possibly can. I was grabbing the, both of these blades by the tangs when I quenched them. so. The ends of the tanks probably didn't get an optimal quench anyway, which means that they weren't as hard as the blades anyway, but I don't like buying too many bandsaw blades when I don't have to, so to take it easy on the teeth on my bandsaws, I like to get these nice and soft before I try to cut a slot in them. I'm using a feathery flame so I don't get too hot too quick. Then I'm going to run the temper down tang a little bit, run temper colors down. I'm not going to run that dull red color all the way down, but I am going to put a softer temper into the tang to make it stronger. And I'm going to move the flame a lot. I'm doing it on from all sides gradually and not developing any uh, actual like heat kinks or anything in the tang. I often work on pairs of knives like this because it's more efficient to do so. Working on more than two knives in a batch kind of drives me crazy, but I like the efficiency of two. So we're going to let that cool off. Air cool for uh, about 5-10 minutes and then we're going to do the same thing over again to kind of uh, repeat and uh, Kind of like stress what we've done to it already, as in reinforce the treatment that we've just given it by repeating it. Alright, we're doing it again. Okay, got these guys cooled down. Now we are going to take a scribe here and mark a center line back from the center of the bolster. Because we don't want we don't want to braise these ends on crooked and these tangs do have some down curve to them a little bit of down curve is alright though depends on if it's going to be a straight style of handle or 
like a western handle. The western ones tend to have a little drop to them. The straight style ones need to be more centered on the bolster and in line with the spine. So this one's going to have a western handle. This one is going to have more of a uh, wah style straight handle. And that actually suits the tang on both of these just fine too. The other one's got more drop than this one. There's a center line for it and then we're going to mark the outlines of where the bolt slot will be. Now we're moving to the little porta band to actually cut the slots. Now here we're just going to clean up these inside corners a little bit. Make sure the sides of this slot are parallel all the way up into the inside corner. So I'll just kind of clean up work from that rough cut on the bandsaw. So that's good for that one. Now we get We'll get number two here. Clean up the end of the slot a little bit too with the side of the file. And that one uh, looks good too. So now on to the next step. We've got it held in place. I'm holding it in place with the dynamic jaw. I'm just using the corner of the vise as a quick press. An arbor press would work too. We want the fit tight but not so tight that it cracks this steel here. Fortunately this is soft and malleable so it'll spread a little bit and then grip this in here. And now we have another beginning press fit to center up on the hammering block. This block's got a little notch in it. It's just a piece of micarta. Kind of hold everything. Cup it a little. And I don't worry about mashing the threads in this part because I only need the threads out in this part. You can use all thread for this. I just use bolts because I got a big box of these. Check it for alignment by siding down it. Tap and adjust until it looks good. We're almost there. A little bit more. We don't want to be bending the bolt. We want to be 
moving its position inside the press fit. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's close. A little bit more. Not too much. Kind of finish the line by really tapping the end of the bolt rather than smacking it around where it's pressed into the tang. And that, that looks good to me too. That is in line with the spine. So we're good to go. Now we're going to go braze them. Okay, so as you can see I've got my brazing flux here. This uh, type of brazing rod does tend to come with a flux coating already, but I don't uh, like to just rely on that. I like to add some flux. Now I'm using the Victor Torch with a number one welding tip run pretty soft here. For a gentle heat. I've got my brazing shades on. I'm going to heat the end of this a little bit. Dip it in some flux. Put a little more flux on there. Now we're going to start heating this joint. Now this is a plated bolt. But I've got all the shop doors open and uh, this is not going to give off a whole lot of foul smoke but I do be conscious of not burning it in as the, the coating burns off. I don't find that it's a barrier for the um, actual brazing ever. So you heat everything up. You heat the joint. You heat the brass. The bolt. You get it from both sides. And you need to be able to see the brass flow wet out over the surface and flow and fill that joint up nicely. And then uh, a lot of the time I'll just keep it hot a little bit and look for any uh, chunks of flux that it would be easy to scrape off at this point. You get them now. And then I'll uh, let that cool. Now, as knife makers, you may know that I got this up above a critical heat, so this is going to air harden a little bit, and my grain size is a little blown. So, what I'm going to do after this cools down is reheat it up just to a normalizing temp. Let that cool, do that twice, and then I'm going to give it one subcritical anneal also to soften everything back up just to make sure my grain size and uh, hardness level in the end of this isn't um, inappropriate for the finished piece. I'll get you a little closer up to the uh, brazing job on the second one of these. All right, let's do this again. Okay, we're heating the end of our rod. Dip it in some flux. And we're going to slowly heat up these whole works. From both sides. Try to bring the parts up to heat together as much as possible. Get a little bit of flux on there before everything melts, or before uh, things start scaling up or anything like that. Keep everything at heat. 
melt the brass a little, blow it. Same from the other side. Make sure that brass wets out. Sucks into the joint from both sides. Keep it a little hot, scrape off some flux. And we're good to go. There's number two brazed. A lower orange color visible. Reduce that grain size, stress relief. We're gonna let that air cool. Doing that on both of them twice. Just hitting this up on the bench grinder real quick to get the smoke and most of the flux away so we can see what's underneath. Kind of pecking at it with a scribe just a little bit. That pops it off pretty good. A pickle and some spare X or sodium bisulfate will also help melt this flux off, but usually I'm wanting to move right ahead and not wait on that. So this works pretty well and then I'll I'll go bench grinder it again on the wire wheel. Kind of get any remaining flakes off here. The carbide scribe works really well for just cracking this glass flux. Yep. Then I'll grind the edges a little bit too on the 1x42. You can see the brass has flowed all the way through the joint. The flux is all off. The edges are clean. And that's looking good. So now we're just going to cut the end of the bolt off. And we're going to give that a quick deburr. And we're ready to continue on with the rest of the journey of making our handle now we have a tang that we can scribe onto the block for alignment when drilling um, the entire handle block out to fit this bolster and tang